Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Deuteronomy chapter 2. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we come past the Mount Seir many days. So we're going over the history again, what happened. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, You have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you northward. Compass means go around. So it looks like they may have just circle, circle, circle this mountain. And command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, that's the brother of Jacob, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore behave yourselves. That's what he's telling them. Meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land. No. Not so much as a footbreath, because I have given it, I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. So here's Esau, the one that angered God by the birthright, and God says that land is their land. But you gotta pass through it. And then they lose their land for the curse. So then I will curse them that curse you, I will curse them. You shall buy meat of them for money. Buy food, that ye may eat, and ye shall also buy water of them for money, that ye may drink. So, here's the first time in the wilderness, 40 years of money showing up and buying things. They haven't bought anything since Egypt. God has provided them water. God has provided them manna. Now as they're getting closer and closer to the promised land, now we get the new generation people. You can use your money now to purchase food and water. They're still getting the manna. God doesn't want them to, to you know, oh, we're thirsty, we're hungry. For the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness. These 40 years... So they've been in it for 40 years. The Lord thy God has been with thee. And thou hast lacked nothing. Now that's a miracle. In this wilderness, they've been fed. They've been given drink. Yet they've had no strong drink. They've had no great drink. Later on you'll read that their clothes, they didn't go bad on them. Their shoes did not wear out. And when we passed by our brethren, the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, though the way of the plain from Elah and from Ezer Geber, Gaber, we turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. That's the children of Lot. We're in family ground here. But all these families do not like God and they don't like the Israelites. And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee of their land for a possession, because I have given Ar unto the children of Lot for a possession. So, ancestral relationship, children that are against Israel later, have a land as much as Esau has land. And they blow it because they curse Israel. The Immans dwelt there in times past, a people great 
and many and tall as the Anakin. Now these are the giants. Now God is rubbing in the face of these children of Israel now. Because when they were at, their fathers and their grandfathers were at Kadesh Barnea, they said, Oh, there are people tall, great and strong. There are giants there. We're just as grasshoppers. Watch how God's going to answer that, those cries from their parents, from their grandparents. Verse 11, which also were accounted giants. So there's giants. There are giants. We found these bones of this huge big man over here. Oh my God, what, what is it? Open your Bible and find out they're giants. And if you've ever seen any of those pictures on the internet of those skeletons, they are huge. As the Anmakins, because the Moabites call them Emons. They have different names. Some places they call the New York Giants. Some places they call them the San Francisco Giants. Right? The Horums also dwell in Seir before time. But the children of Esau succeeded them. Uh-oh. When they had destroyed them. Uh-oh. From before them. And dwelt in their stead. Oh, we can't go in. There's giants. We're going to be dead. We're, our children are going to die. Uh, the children of Esau, Edom, killed giants, and I wasn't with them. I'm with you guys. I am blessing you guys. I have been with you since Egypt. You can kick giant butt. As Israel did in the land of his possession, which the Lord gave unto them. Now rise up, said I. And get you over the brook Z Zirid. And we went over the brook Zirid. And the space in which we came from Kadesh Barnea, Barnea until, until we come over the until we come over the brook Zirid was thirty and eight years. Ooh, that's a long trip. Thirty eight years because of sin. Because of rebelling against God. You know how many years we've been suffering from sin, from Adam and Eve rebelling against the Word of God? 6,000 years, practically. Unto all the generation of the men of war, Numbers 1, were wasted out from among the host. Look, look how God uses the word, wasted. Their lives were wasted. As the Lord sweared unto them. He's talking about their fathers. He, he's talking about their grandparents. And uncles. To the new generation that's come up. And he's saying your, your family. Wasted. 38 years. And you talked about. Oh the giants and where is grasshoppers. Well. Giants fall down very quick. <laughs> David's going to find that out. And his army's going to find it out. As the Lord sweared unto them. God said, swear, you're going to die. For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them, their fathers, their grandparents, their aunts, their uncles, to destroy them from among the hosts until they were consumed. God said, you're not going to that land that they're dead. They're dead now. So it came to pass. When all the men of war were consumed and dead from among the people. Here we are. Here we are. Deuteronomy chapter 2. All those people have died. We've got the new generation. Consumed. The Lord God spake unto me saying, Thou art to pass over through our. The coast of Moab this day. Move on. Get closer. And when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon. That's the other son of Lot. Distress them not. Nor meddle with them. For I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession. Now if you look up on the internet. Old Testament, Old Testament map. Israel. Moab. Esau. Or Edom. And Moab. Uh, uh, excuse me. Not, uh, Ammon. You'll find out you'll find out the line and right down the middle of these things is the Jordan River. You can find maps on the internet of these areas. For I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given unto the children of Lot 
for a possession. You know what the Bible says in the New Testament about Lot? He was a just man. And the children of Lot get a blessing. That's interesting. And if you go back and check out that, that his daughters got him drunk and had incense relations together. And here's these two boys, Moab and Ammon. And God tells Israel of Abraham, that's their land. Now when God draws out a land for a particular reason of possession, he'll tell you in the Bible, and I don't see anywhere in America from Genesis to Revelation. America is not even in the Bible. When thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them. For I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. That also was accounted a land of giants. And when I grew up as a child, there was a television program called some, The Land of the Giants. And these little people run around with these big people, and it's in the Bible. Giants dwelt therein in old time. And the Amorites called them Zemzumdums. Gave them a big name. So the Bible accounts there are giants. Nothing wrong with that. A people great. Great people, giants. And many, there were a lot of them. And tall, as the Anakins. Oh, you know, that word also looks very familiar to Anakin, the Star Wars. Anakin, the... Uh, the, what, that's the one that became Darth Vader or something. But the Lord destroyed them before them. The God killed them. Oh, we can't go in the promised land. There's giants in there. We're just as grasshoppers. God took care of them. Before them. And they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. That would be the, the oh, which one were we talking about? Lost track. The Amorites. Ammonites. So if the Ammonites can do it, who are not a people of God, why can't you do it, Israel? And what, you know what Moses is doing with his generation? Yeah, there's giants over there, folks. There's big giants. There's great giants. There's a whole bunch of giants. Go in there and kick giant butt. That's what he's telling them. It can be done. Moses is not going and does not want the same thing happen with those ten spies. Oh, we can't win them because there's giants. He's like, everyone that's around us has, has taken care and has beat giant butt. Go in there and go do the same thing. And you got God on your side. As he did to the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, when he destroyed the Horems from before them. Boy, there's a lot of giants in different names. And they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead, even unto this day. You see where Seir is? Yeah. There were giants there. Yeah. Esau's living there now. Yeah, he kicked giant butt. Now let's go in there and go kick giant butt. And the Evans. This whole chapter is given to giants. And the Evans which dwell in Hazram. Even unto Ahab. The Kaphatoriums. Which came forth out of Kaphtar. Destroyed them and dwelt in their stead. And you'll find this in Genesis 10, 6, and 13 of Ham. Rise ye up again, he says. Get up, guys. Come on. Take your journey. Pass over the river Arnon. Behold, I have given into thy hand Shihon the Amorite, king of Heshman, and his land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. All right, now let's start battling. Now let's start the war. Now let's get going. But these other people, leave them alone. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven. That's interesting. Whole heaven. Who shall hear the report of thee and shall tremble? Rahab and Jericho says they are scared. And be in anguish because of thee. Angry. I sent messengers out of the wilderness of Kemoth unto Shihon, king of Hezbollah, with the words of peace, saying, 
All right, Moses sends a man to this king. Let me pass through thy land. I will go along the highway. And this has been before. This is what Moses said we need to go through. I will neither turn unto the right hand nor to the left. We're going to go straight. Point A to point B. Thou shalt sell me meat for money that I may eat. And give me water for money that I may drink. Only I will pass through on my feet. As the children of Esau which dwelt in Seir and the Moabites which dwelt in Ar did unto me. That's a lie. Moses, you sent, you sent the same messengers into those lands. And they came out with troops to withstand you and would not let you in. Moses is using a lie here to and maybe he'll help us out. All men are liars. Unto I shall pass over Jordan, that's the other side, unto the land which the Lord God giveth us. We're on our way to the promised land. We don't want anything to do with your land. But Sihon, the king of Heshbon, would not let us pass by him, as the other ones would do, not do either. Would not let us pass by him, for the Lord thy God hardened his spirit and made his heart obstinate. That is hard fixed, stubborn, that he might deliver him unto thy hand as appertaineth this day. And that's exactly what we do with Pharaoh. This king is wicked. He's a vile sinner. And God says, I'll let my people kill you. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have begun to give Sihon and his land before thee. Begin to possess that thou mayest inherit his land. Sion came out against us, he and all his people, to fight at Jahaz. Numbers 21, 21. And the Lord our God delivered him before us, and we smote him and his sons and all his people. And we took all the, his cities at that time, and utterly destroyed men and the women and the little ones of every city. We left none to remain, and God said, Thou shalt not kill. And he called up a military battle. What's the problem? I can't sign on to the armed forces because God said thou shalt not kill. And God says, that Sihon, get in there and whip them all and kill them all and burn it all and destroy it all. Because they're wicked sinners. And if you don't, their, sinners, their sins are going to grow further and further and more and more and become even more desperate of sins as America is today. No one controls sodomy in America. Look where it's standing today. No one has curbed sexual perversion. And look where we stand in America today. No one would dis discipline their children. And look where we are today. God's answer is that. Get in there and kill them. Stop the sin. Now when God says thou shalt not kill. He doesn't mean that you're going to outright an individual or a few people, but individual plan to do harm to somebody else for whatever reason there be in a non-war area. War is of the Bible and God allows death in war. But if you're going to plan to kill somebody because you want something of his, or he has done something bad to you. Thou shalt not kill. But we're in a state of war here. Only the cattle we took for prey unto ourselves. And the spoil of the cities we took. For error. Error. error which is by the brink of the river of Arnon. And from the city that is by the river. Even unto Gilead. There was not one city too strong for us. The Lord our God delivered all unto us. Now look at that. What's going on here is your fathers, your uncles, your grandparents were afraid. Well, what did you just do? Man, we destroyed a whole city. We took over a king. We're ready. Let's go. Only unto the land of the children of Ammon thou camest not nor unto any place of the river Jebuk, nor unto the cities of the mountains, 
nor unto whatsoever the Lord our God forbid. So if God says don't go there, they didn't go. So now we're moving to history. We're moving to current events as now we are doing. Moses has got the attention, the eyes, and the ears, and the hearts of the people. And what did he do? Did he do a mathematical formula of class? No. Did he do a science class and experiments? Absolutely not. Did he talk about situation ethics and all that? Absolutely not. Moses, when he had the attention of the people, he brought forth history. This is what God has done to us. America failed when... She has changed the story of the pilgrims and the Mayflower. Because the pilgrims and the Mayflower, the Geneva Bible, was a very Christian foundation of America. Yeah, it went bad, but that is the foundation. America and everything of her governing powers was built upon the Geneva Bible. But then, you know, we gave them little black hats, we gave them nice little stories, and we changed it. And now we can't even mention it at all. And one day, given to Thanksgiving of that celebration, we plan to go shopping the money we, we don't have. We plan to watch a bunch of idiots play with a stupid brown ball. And we don't give God the thanks. That's where our morality has gone in America. And had we gone in there like Shihan the king and got rid of that sin and got rid of the sinners... America not be destroyed as she is today. But we all do it under the form of the Constitution. I enjoy the Constitution too, the rights I have, but you ever check the phone book, uh, the yellow pages of the phone book, find me religions are out there? That God does not approve of, calls an abomination, and then you turn around and say, God bless America. Absolutely not. <laughs> 